nyanya na ase na mba ni meje na obodo ana ala obodo kwensu buzu ka na maji Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining me from Africa, Asia, Europe, America, or Australia, I thank you very much for your contributions on my channel. Please, as usual, after watching, don't forget to go to the comment section and leave your comments. Comment according to what you have watched. Whatever be your contributions on the channel, put it down at the comment section. We we'll learn from each other on the comment section. That is where we interact. That is where we correct our mistakes. That is where we hear from each other better. So whatever interest you have, whatever suggestion you have, put it down at the comment section after watching. Thank you so much. And remember us and also don't forget to share the video share the video to every platform where you belong share the video to all angles wherever you belong share the video so that the video can reach to people so that they can know what is happening we cannot allow them to change the story we cannot allow people to hijack the story we will tell the story exactly what is happening and the way it is we will not allow them to change the narrative you know since Mazen Nandi Khan has been abducted by the Nigerian government and sent to Nigeria through extraordinary rendition which is the truth and nothing but the truth. They begin to say that Mazin Nandekano jumped bail. Mazin Nandekano at no time never jumped bail. He never jumped bail at any point in time. You and I know that very well. He did not. Mazin Nandekano was detained in 2015. And when he was detained, detained Mazin Nandekano was left in detention for two good years. He didn't attend to court. They refused to attend to him in court. They refused to bring him to court. Even when they brought him to court and the court ordered for his immediate release, unconditional release, the government continued to hold Mazin Nandekano. They held Mazin Nandekano until after two years. When the lawyers continued to put more pressure and did exactly what they have to do, and later he was being granted bail with a very strong procedures, with some very on some conditions that are very uncalled for, some conditions that abuses his human rights. And Mazin Nandekano came out. With all those atrocities that the government have committed against him, he was still waiting to go back to court and begin to face his case. He was preparing to go to court. Just four days to the court, four days to the court, the military came to his house to kill him. They came to his house to kill him unnecessarily. Somebody who is preparing to go, who has even made announcement that he was going to Abuja to face his court and he's going with one million men to Abuja to stand for his trial. The Nigerian government was so troubled because they have no case against him. They were so afraid they have no case against him. They decided to come to his house to kill him. In the process, 28 people were gone down. Jack, his dog, was killed. And miraculously, through the grace of Chukuka Biyama, Mazin Nandekano survived the assassination. And since then, he has been able to stay away and secure his life in elsewhere. Not until when we wake up and heard that the government of Nigeria have abducted Mazin Nandekano and brought into Nigeria through extraordinary rendition, which is against international law. And they are stressed to go to face it. They are feeling the heat. I must tell you, they are feeling the heat. It is not easy for them. They can pretend for all I care, but we know that they are feeling the heat from around the world. When they abducted Mazin Nandekano in 2015, it is not the same thing now. It is not the same thing. It's not the same business then. Then Mazin Nandekano have not had a tap proof the way he had now, for now. The whole world knows about the struggle of Mazin Nandekano and what he stands for. They know what he stands for and he is fighting a just cause. So, the world cannot be silent. The world cannot be silent and Nigeria is in trouble. Kenya, who connect with Nigeria to plot this evil, they are also in trouble. Kenya will never go free. They will pay dearly for what they have done. For joining a corrupt and terrorist government to kidnap an innocent man. A British citizen for that matter. A British citizen. A British citizen was kidnapped by Kenya and sent to Nigeria through extraordinary rendition for no just cause. He never committed any offense against Kenya. He never had any problem with Kenya. He never did any business with Kenya. They just went to man to kidnap him and through extraordinary rendition sent him to Nigeria and they will surely pay dearly for it. Nigerian government is a terrorist government. A terrorist government, it doesn't matter how you look at it, just imagine what they are doing to Ibo. They sent assassin to go and kill Ibo in his home. They never invited Ibo to the court. They never gave him any invitation. They never arrested Ibo 
Ebuo did not commit any crime. Neither did anybody report that Ebuo stole his item. But the federal government of Nigeria sent their assassin to go and kill Ebuo. Luckily for Ebuo, Ebuo escaped. And two people were killed in the house. And they came out boldly. They claimed that they were the one to win that letter. They now issued him a warrant that they declared Ebuo wanted. In which kind of country do you see that? An innocent man declared wanted for no just cause. This is the same thing they did to Mazen and the Kano. They are coming for Ibo, and we will not be silent. That is why every Biafran out there or every Odudua out there, you have to speak up. Injustice against one is injustice against all. Don't be silent and say because it's not an Odudua man, you will not talk. Don't be silent and say because it's not a Biafran man, you will not talk. Whenever injustice happens to anybody, regardless where the person comes from, regardless of the religion of that person, you have to speak up. Because if you keep silent, it is going to come to you. It is going to come to you. What Buhari government is doing to everybody in the southeastern part of Nigeria and the southwestern part of Nigeria today, we get to every southerner if they don't wake up. So if you're a southerner, this is the time for you to wake up. Wake up and speak up. Do not be, do not be scared of anything. If you don't speak now, a time will come when you have no voice. This is the time you have to hear your opinion. Open your mouth and speak. Speak like never before. This is the time. This is the time you have to make your point known. And we have to keep speaking. Speak from all angles. As I'm telling you now, Mazen Nandekano is held and healthy. For those of them who are carrying rumors up and down, thinking that Mazen Nandekano is going to die in jail or something is going to happen, nothing is going to happen to Mazen Nandekano. Recently, his lawyer has gone to see him and his lawyer came and sent a message that he went to see Mazen Nandekano and they spent almost three hours talking. And he told us that Mazen Nandekano is in good spirit. That is a very wonderful news. I told you, I've always told you of my news that Mazin Nandekano is much more stronger than ever. He is in good spirit. That is what his lawyer said. After spending three good hours with him, he talked with him. The message he brought to us is the message of unity. The only thing Mazin Nandekano requires from you and I is that we should be united together. We should not allow division to come among us. That is what I have always, always been saying and crying about. We should not allow division of any type to come in our midst. Just like people who are talking about who abducted and who betrayed and who did not betray. That is not what we are after. Whoever betrayed him as can betray himself. Whoever betrayed him as the can have his own self to be blamed. And that is not what we are after. What we are after now is the freedom of Martin and can with the freedom of the Bia France and every other indigenous tribe in that very contraption called Nigeria. That is what I have to be concerned about. And the message of Martin and can through his lawyer to Ross is that we should all be united in this fight. He is in a very high spirit more than ever, according to the lawyer. And I trust him for what he said. The lawyer cannot be lying to us. He is in good spirit, stronger than ever. Mazen Nandekano, what he says he does. If you have followed Mazen Nandekano from the very time he started the first, since 2012 to date, Mazen Nandekano has been changed in his world. He is still the same person, very outspoken, saying the right thing at the right time. He is standing for Biafra, just as he told you, Biafra or death. Martin Nandekano is not giving up on Biafra. And he is coming out with Biafra this time. This is the final battle. One thing you have to have in your back of your mind at every time. Remember the prayer that Martin Nandekano gave us to pray. The son. Continue that prayer until the end. I believe you me, before the end of that prayer, something must happen. Something miraculously must happen. I trust Martin Nandekano. This is somebody who is working with Chuku Kabiyama. Mazen Nandekano never utter any speech. He never make any broadcast without calling on Chuko Kabiyama to take control. That is why I do not play with any of his message. When I listen to every of his broadcasts, when I listen to his broadcast, I do not joke with every comment that comes, comes out from the broadcast of Mazen Nandekano. And I would like you to be, do the same. Take serious every information in the broadcast of Mazen Nandekano. It is not just ordinary. He is not just making, making the speech to entice you. He's not just saying that thing to please you. He is saying exactly the message he received from Chuko Gabiyama because he has no other God except Chuko Gabiyama. And whenever, before he opens his mouth to speak, he takes permission. That is why I believe that whatever is coming from the mouth of Mazen Nandekano is as Chuko Gabiyama has spoken. Let us continue to pray for Mazen Nandekano wherever we are at every given time. And also listen to his messages. As I always tell you, message of Mazen Nandekano is never old. I can play it over and over and over again. Each time you play the message of Mazen Nandekano, it gives you strength, it gives you energy, it makes a great revelation to your head. It educates you and makes a great revelation for you. 
to make you stand strong. That is why each time we have to listen to the brokers of Mars and Gam. And I'm going to share with you another brokers of Mars and Gam so that you don't forget. Let it be ringing bell in your head at all times. He is our leader and continues to be our leader. Ezi onye wanyi na chine ke nan ke prumi nye ni ne chuko ki ka abya ma bonya nye ne fena goza hanso yonyo bana ni anache. Gonyo mwona madine rubeli isi. Gonyo bana ni abo kaka. Oboche ene ka ene tuge se bube de ngozi. Mma lite na ogogo. Ndi bo we tuge bige bi onye mwem. Umuge we bako no wani ne we nano zi oma nke gyome genezi ha. Stena no madu dendo. Nan ke bule de ngozi. And you were asked no way how when I can you want your beneath no banana park or saucer. Come on, a dendobo. Oh, four but I'm a gang. I'm going to look open so can I dig my room, baby. Nay, you know, putting in a gabber and I'm Miss Obama and a Jaffa get you with Benabu and Kanye. And you were not poker when I don't get an assay, the food and Kanye and Asuna Kwan Kanye and the Kormat Taginobi. Don't you want my chin? I can not keep the beacon. Dickies went up to Mure, no bone, Egypt, Scotia was the home where Bonda Biafra would open to Buzu. Come on, a dendo carry. And you were not Jagama. Na asegi ni mwono danyi ni anye kekele hansongi. We nye gini sopri nutu ni jama mbwe ni ine. Ni inanye wei chose wei zuka kanyo wanyane ke farosi. Obe mwini juwe na gozen so mwukwa nye ni ine. Obe yame ni aipi yo bi juwe wa mkura wano wani na yana katu kumade dendo. Anye wei ne togeze wei dengo si sige biko batanyo se nye mako. Obe nane ke bo nye 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 fengwa nye kisi ala nye. Ki uwe na potande ke. No bun ke kwensu. Anye wei nye gufe ni nan sopro na i jama na si. Le kwa kandi ula nye ni ne kakasi suwe pa hono. Hawe eta hapu kiku ni ozo. Obode kwensi buzu ala wakwa ni yeze bubede ngozi. Anyo wane bumbu yi wena kwa kwa hanso. Genasi ni mbuki choze wwezu gage. Anyo wena ajage ma wene eto. Genasi onye keli hini ne kereke mwana wwe onye kere. Nalo tutoni ni nansopu ni ne jamma ni ne. Sete ne bige. Marone bimika na jogi ise. 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 Having handed over our proceedings to heaven. We must therefore proceed. Unfailingly and very speedily to preach this very gospel that we have been mandated to preach this very day, because heaven and earth will bear us witness that they came in their time and the gospel of redemption was preached and men were saved from their falling. This evening, I will start by calling upon Bishop Coker, or should I say all the Catholics around the world to please warn Bishop Coker to desist from making statements and comments that will annoy God Almighty in heaven. If he continues in the manner that we have deduced he is likely to follow, then I will place cross on him in public. I am not saying this very lightly because he is a man that I have enormous regard and respect for. Bishop Coca, I respect him. I love him immensely. But he came up with some statements which are, should I say, unbecoming of a sensible, reasonable human being. Therefore, he must retrace his steps. We must also remind ourselves that a few days ago, I said something about those of them trying their damnest best to try to keep Nigeria together a zoological republic that should not exist in the first place. And this evening, I want to reinforce this very fact that the curse that I placed upon the United Kingdom, a people that I revere and I love very much, people that I hold their citizenship and have sworn allegiance to, and will continue to defend their interest, genuine interest, of course, because I am an Anglophile at heart. That's very Britain today. It is not up to seven days that I made that statement live here on air, the leader of the Welsh people have come out to make a categorical statement that Britain no longer exists in their own thinking. This is what I want to guide the thinking of all our people. I want it to guide our understanding of what is happening in the zoo and to understand also the spiritual dimension which we have chosen to pursue this very noble cause. According to Mark Drakeford, who is the leader of the Welsh people in the UK, and I quote, the United Kingdom is over, he said. UK, as I told you a few days ago, that anybody who has a hand or who is trying to keep Nigeria together, their kingdom or their entity will disintegrate. 
These are the things that I want you to understand this very evening that Nigeria has expired. The wrath of Almighty God is upon Nigeria. Look at Tinubu, for example, what the Yorubas are going through on his account. Look at how the Christian managers in the north are being slaughtered and brutally massacred by the Janjaweed elements of the Caliphate. Because the likes of Bishop Koka is there preaching unity that he knows doesn't exist. Because Britain is directly involved in trying to keep together what God Almighty has rendered asunder. That is the reason why Mark Drakeford has come out to say that United Kingdom is over. He's a very heavyweight politician in the UK, the leader of the Welsh people. He is the first minister of the Welsh people. Wales, of course, in the UK. He's a principality. And mind you, Prince Charles is supposed to be the Prince of Wales, or should I say, the titular head of the government of Wales people. But here we have Mark Drakeford saying it categorically that Britain is over. And I want Britain. If you continue to meddle in the affairs of Nigeria to the extent whereby you are presenting a stumbling block to the emancipation of the children of God, the children of light, United Kingdom will be decimated. Because you're very proud and very arrogant, because you think that you're Caucasian, you're white, you can do anything and get away with it. You may think that the disintegration of the UK has nothing to do with Biafra, but I can assure you categorically that it has. If you do not stop meddling in Nigeria, if you do not stop this, your, should I say, perverted racist devotion to keeping people who shouldn't be one together in one monstrous entity called the Zoological Republic of Nigeria, believe you me, God Almighty in heaven will destroy Britain beyond recognition. And it started to happen already. It is happening already. I warned you and I told you, you may disregard the agitation for Biafra and target as nothing. Because you came, you saw, you conquered and you colonized. But I'm warning you today, if you continue, the wrath of God will be upon you. As I warned the zoo many, many years ago, if you don't allow we Biafrans to go, that zoological republic called Nigeria will be a worse place than Somalia. And today it is happening. And if you have not applied for your Somalian visa, please try and do so. Should I say Somali visa? Try and do so as quickly as possible because the zoo is on the path of destruction. And there is nothing man can do to reverse it. Mark today's death and what I'm telling you, Nigeria will be destroyed beyond human comprehension. So says the Lord of hosts. Anything I tell you here is gospel. Anything I open my mouth to tell you must come to pass. Because Almighty determined that we should come. And we have come to preach this very gospel in truth and in every honesty. And I want Britain to understand this today. If you stand as an obstacle on the path of Biafra freedom, you will be destroyed. The same way that the late dead Buhari tried. Buhari tried to stop Biafra from coming. Today he's in a shallow grave in Saudi Arabia. Not only that, that kingdom he was trying to build is now shaking. That very kingdom, that very Fulani caliphate, the Fulani takeover of Nigeria is in tatters because we are here, or should I say, Chukwuki Kabiyama determined that we should come and nothing, absolutely nothing is going to stop us from performing the will of the Almighty. Today, I can tell you categorically that in the United Kingdom, the first minister of Wales, part and parcel of this United Kingdom that colonized, enslaved, subjugated, and still colonizing the zoo called Nigeria till today, a part of Britain have now said that they're going to divide. They will leave. Scotland will leave. Wales will leave. Northern Ireland will join the Irish Republic. And you only have the little England at last. And when all these things are happening to them because of their pride and ego, they will not acknowledge that the work they did against the children of God in Biafra land is what is responsible for their demise as a once great nation or a once great people. They are also on the path of decline and nothing can reverse it unless they stop meddling in the affairs of Biafra. The United Kingdom is over and a new union should be crafted to reflect a voluntary association of four nations. In other words, Britain will no longer exist.
You have England, you have Wales, you have Scotland, and you have Northern Ireland. The reason for that is because they meddled in the affairs of the children of God. As I told you earlier, Almighty God in heaven has a way of punishing his children. And we have been roundly punished, believe you me. If you have to be subjugated under the very cruel, barbaric rule of Fulani Janja Buddhism, you will understand what we are talking about. As I'm speaking to you right now, most villages are under siege. There are killings and rapings, abductions and murder going on right across the length and breadth of the Zoological Republic. But they cannot understand what is happening to them. They know that the problem of insecurity in Nigeria is intractable for the simple reason that they have allowed, failed, should I say, to allow Biafra to go. The sooner they understand this or realize this, the better for everybody. But I'm not sure they will because they are very stubborn. And as God hardened the heart of Pharaoh to fail, so are they also going to fail. And that is why those of them who are in Benue State, that is why the likes of Governor Autumn or the very young man who was mouthing his rubbish um, a day or two ago concerning the deployment of Eastern Security Network into Lower Benue, is in for a very, very difficult and horrible experience of their lives. I must warn also Governor Autumn of Benue State. I am not laying claim to Benue State, the entirety of Benue State, not at all. What I'm making very clear to you is that there are Igbo people, Igbo communities, not traders, not migrants, not settlers, no. These are our traditional towns, communities, and villages wickedly gerrymandered into the north. That you have Igbo people today answering Igbo names speaking Igbo language, who are answering to Londoners, an abomination before God Almighty in heaven. I will not allow it to continue. Those Igbo speaking parts of Benue State is part and parcel of Biafra, part and parcel of the Eastern region. And should anything happen to them, if you fail to control Fulani incursion into that very territory, then ESN will continue to do their work. And I have commended them earlier and allow me to do so again at this very moment. I commend the men and women, not just of our high command, but also of the Eastern Security Network that successfully pursued and apprehended a notorious Fulani bandit by the name Mohammed Issa. We have the videos. For those of them claiming he's an old man, they're all lying and they know it very well. He is the leader of a gang of abductors, of rapists, and of murderers, tormenting our farming communities. But I'm glad to report this very evening, morning or night, depending on where you are, that that menace, that threat has been permanently put to bed. It will no longer happen. Should our people in Benue State be subjected to further attacks, I am also informing Governor Autumn of Benue State. I will make sure that ESN returns to that very area. Or should I say, come out of the bushes to confront whoever comes against the children of the Most High God, Elohim in heaven. This is a warning to all of you. For those of you that specialize, in, should I say, in twisting the obvious, in turning truth into lies, I never claimed the whole of Benue State. You people carved Igbo people into Benue, which is unacceptable, we are in an era, not that of the old, compromised, and discredited Ohanese and Diyaranandiyoshi, not in that very era. No, we are not in that anymore. We are not in the era of compromised governors in the pocket of the Fulani Caliphate, no. We are now in the era of IPOB. And no inch of territory belonging to traditional should I say, ethnicities making up Biafra will be surrendered to anybody, no. And in Benue State, we have taught them, while they were discussing that, uh, don't come to Benue, we're already on the ground in Benue State, in the world And we are not in Benue State that doesn't belong to us. We are in Igbo parts of Benue State, Igbo communities of Benue State. And we are there to defend them, and that is precisely what we are going to do, and nobody is going to discourage us otherwise. We are making it very clear today that the Eastern Security Network is on the ground. We are on the ground. 
in Benue State and in every part of Biafalan for that matter. We are in Cross River, we are in Akwaibon, we are in Bayelsa. Everywhere it is happening. Anywhere we confront Fulani headsmen, these terrorists, we will drive them away. Be rest assured, we are not going to rest one iota until our farmlands, our homes, and our forests are secure. What is happening in Yoruba land cannot happen in Biafra land. Nobody, no idiot can come from anywhere to claim any inch or parcel of Biafran forest. It is not, it is not doable. Instead, we all die there. That is why I am making this presentation live, at least for those of you who may be able to come over on Instagram, that I am on Instagram and I'm live. If you want to see a live video of this very broadcast, it is there. You can and should be able to see it. Anywhere in Biafra land we confront Fulani terrorists, we shall meet them head on. We know that they are part of the police and the army. Danjuma himself, General T.Y. Danjuma himself, testified before the British Parliament that the army of Nigeria and the police are colluding in the conquest of indigenous populations in Nigeria. And we are no exception to that very horrible and sinister conspiracy. The police we have in our land are terrorists in uniform. The army we have in Biafra land are basically terrorists. They are there to aid and to support Fulani Janja with advancement to the Atlantic Ocean. And we are there to stop them. And we are stopping them and will continue to stop them. A few days ago, as I said, we embedded our men and women of the Northern Command of Eastern Security Network. When we said Northern Command, people were confused. Biafra land is a nation. We have Northern Biafra, we have Central, we have the South, which is the coastal region, we have the East, and we have the West. When I talk about the Northern Command, I'm talking about the Northern part of Biafra land, which incidentally starts from Benue State. So we are right to be there. If you don't want us to be in Benue State, quietly go back to Abuja and appeal to them. Tell them to release Igbo people in Benue and carve them back into a Boeing state where they should belong, or any good state as the case may be. Therefore, anybody, you know, one thing about Nigeria is that they tend to defend the aggressor. It's in the, it's in the, it is in the DNA in Nigeria to always support evil. That is why this very newspaper publication, I don't have a means of putting it here on Instagram where I am broadcasting live, where you can see my face and my facial expression, but it, is, it will be on my Facebook page. If you go there, you will see it. This publication was made on January 23 of 2021, this very year. It is a front page news by Vanguard. I want you to understand how an average Nigerian thinks, how the reason why I think that Nigeria itself is a curse upon humanity. There on the front page, you will see, we will kill all policemen and take over a dose state, full and a janjaweed. Those they claim are foreigners. These people, they told us are foreigners. They come from Mali, from, from, from Senegal, from Gambia, from heaven knows where, from Niger, from Chad, from Latin Cameroons. But they are in Nigeria killing people. After killing us, they will not turn around and tell us to absorb them into our communities. That is why anybody, any Igwe, any PG, any greedy, avaricious fool, stupid enough to give any of our land to Fulani Janjaweed, you are finished. That was a man in Enugu that tried to say nonsense. Go and ask him where he is today. We take no prisoners. You see, the land of Biafra must be defended at all costs. At all costs. It is the land of God, given to his children for their eternal habitation. We may have failed in the past to recognize this very fact, but now that this generation has come, there is nothing anybody can do to stop us from restoring the kingdom of God upon the face of this very earth in the land of Biafra, without apologies to anybody. I understand that the Sarikin, whatever, Sarikin Fulani, of Lagos went to see the US ambassador to Nigeria in Lagos a few days ago. And according to the message, or should I say information coming out of the US mission, they said is to foster cohabitation and unity, that diversity is strength. 
and I want to lay that particular nonsensical narrative to bed tonight before I continue any further. Anybody telling you about strength in diversity, that person is a liar and a deceiver. And the U.S. ambassador is a liar and a deceiver. One thing they don't teach we Africans is this. No country exists on a foundation of multiculturalism that is no, nowhere in the world. Listen to me very carefully. All this nonsense, even the, the, the crap that Coca was coming up with, telling you about diversity is our strength and all that rubbish. Allow me to repeat, there is no country on this earth that survives on a foundation or a bedrock of multiculturalism. It doesn't exist. That is why multiculturalism in Africa is dead on arrival. It can never work because we are tribal beasts by nature. We are tribal by nature. That is why we travel from wherever we are during New Year's, during Christmas, during Easter, during New Year Festival to go back home where we come from. Because that is where we identify with. Now, let me ask the U.S. Ambassador a very simple question. Is United States of America a multicultural society? U.S. that was created and built by Western Europeans. U.S. was created, should I say, created by God, of course. Built by Western Europeans. Mostly English people that was fed up with the way of life of the English monarchy. They went to America on Mary Rose. I want to ask the U.S. ambassador, I want to teach Africans what they don't know this evening. There is no country that functions on this multi-ethnic rubbish. It, nowhere in the world, not even the USA, that was created by people who are not indigenous to America. The owners of the soil of America are Native American Indians. That is a fact of life. God gave America to Western Europe to develop and gave them a special grace to be the beacon and the light and the conscience of the world. Because God knew that if he had left all these wonderful people in Europe, they would become contaminated. He removed them from Europe, sent them to America, built a wonderful nation as a shining light and a beacon for the whole world to look up to. Even that America that was built from scratch by people who are not indigenous to the land is not multicultural. Why am I saying this? America was founded on the principles of Judeo-Christian, Greco-Roman, democratic value systems. I repeat, America is not multicultural. They accommodate other races and other nations. Yes, they can accommodate you. But where you're coming into, the bedrock, the foundation of America is based on Judeo-Christian principles, Greco-Roman political ideology, which is republicanism. America is not multicultural. America is Western Europe. The value systems of Western Europe, Judeo-Christian, Greco-Roman republican governance. Had America been a multicultural society, they will have space for Sharia. I'm now addressing the U.S. ambassador to try to tell them to stop deceiving people. We are educated, we went to school for a reason. We are enlightened and we have our brain intact. There is no country on this earth that runs on this wishy-washy multiculturalism. It doesn't happen. What you have are established order and value systems upon which various cultures can now coexist. If you go to America, you coexist under the provisions of the United States Constitution. And the U.S. Constitution is a Christian Constitution, not Islam. America is not multicultural. But under that bedrock of liberty and egalitarianism, you allow other cultures to come in. But first of all, they must wear allegiance to the or take an oath to uphold the constitution of the USA. That is something that the US ambassador never told the Janja with that went to visit her. The same way that Nigeria cannot function as a viable entity. Willa Shoenka knows what I'm talking about. I'm even sure somebody who claims he's learned as, as Bishop Coker is, understands what I'm talking about. No country on this earth 
The value system of the state of Israel is based on Judaic principles. The value system of Russia is entirely theirs. It's based on theirs. It's a Russian way of doing things from time, from terms of desire. If you go to Saudi Arabia, it is essentially a Sharia Islamic state. You can live there, no, no problem. You can build your churches if you want. They have not started to allow churches to be built. But it is never, never a multicultural society. Japan is not a multicultural society. China is not. They can accommodate you. But that doesn't mean they are this, uh, this is the type of nonsense they feed Africans. And we fall for that very gimmick of multiculturalism. At the end of the day, you end up with a useless contraption like Nigeria. You don't have any value system that anybody anywhere can define. If I talk about the USA, I can talk about hamburger in the USA. We can talk about what else do they have in the USA? Hamburger, you can talk about... Um, What's it called? What are the traditional dishes? Um, apple pie and all the rest of it. You can say that these are American dishes. If you go to the UK, you can talk about maybe mashed potato and bangers and mash, which is sausage and mashed potato as their national meal. That's understandable. But I ask you, if you come to Nigeria, what is the national dish of Nigeria? Does a Fulani Janja with eat a fegusi, where we come from? Does an Igbo man eat a wedu soup? The answer is no. So on what basis is all this so-called multicultural foundation going to be laid upon? On what? We are not one people. We may be black, we may be African, but we are not one people. Not even one religion. If Britain cannot stay in an EU that is entirely Christian, EU is entirely Christian. Britain left. Nigeria, you don't know if Nigeria is Christian or in fact is Islamic. So for me to accept the multiculturalism being preached by the U.S. ambassador, I have to embrace Islam as my religion. That's what it means. And some of you get taken in by all this rubbish. And I feel sorry for you. Yeah, sometimes when I say they say I'm being very arrogant. If you're educated, you will understand that no nation is multicultural. They allow other cultures to come in. It doesn't mean they're multicultural. They have a viable space where multicultural ideas or identities can thrive. But the foundation has to be monolithic. It has to be one dominant value system and ideology. That's how it is all over the world. Don't let anybody fool you otherwise. That is the same reason why you have this, this, this anomaly. In a so-called so republic, you have royal fathers in a republic. Because you are trying to shuffle multiculturalism. You are trying to marry the feudal system of the north, the monarchical system of the west, and the Republican um, system in the East to marry them into one. And what you have is entirely rubbish, and that is why Nigeria can never work. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Competing value systems. Nobody wants their own value system to be subsumed under another person's value system. This is something that the U.S. ambassador never told you. But here I am telling you today, because if you come here, you become educated. If you come here, you become enlightened. If you come here, you stop being a zoo animal, you become a human being. That is why we are the largest and, of course, the most consistent broadcasting platform insofar as Africa is concerned, right across the world. Millions listen to us because they know we preach the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That is why this very day, because you are in one Nigeria, in multiculturalism, the army will come to Olo to defend Fulani Janja with living in our forest. We went to Olo to defend our people. They came, they arrested the clerics. Men of God, they arrested all of them. How many times have you heard that imams were being arrested in the north? Or that villages were being invaded in the north and the imams being arrested? Only in Biafra land. And this is your multiculturalism. This is a place where you want all of us to stay somehow to pretend that all is well when we know that it is not. In that same Nigeria, is where Fulani headsmen openly boast about conquest. Benue State is one. That is why I feel sorry for the idiots talking rubbish from Benue. They came and they made the same bold claim on Edo State. And I quote, We will kill all policemen and take over Edo State. Vanguard publication of January 23, 2021, this year. Only two months ago. Nothing happened to them. Only the Fulanis can lay claim to land that doesn't belong to them and nobody will say anything. When you, when you try to respond, they come against you. 
and your average foolish Nigerian who cannot reason properly, you know, they're not educated very well, I'm sorry to say, will side with the oppressor. It's only in Nigeria where the victim becomes the accused. You came into all, hope was on the matter to give you land in all, to build a full and settlement. And we said no to it. That's all. They talk about all crisis. And now they're trying to blame IPOB, they're trying to blame Eastern Security Network. But all of you are aware of the fact that Nigeria Army and Nigeria Police are essentially full and ginger with terrorists in uniform. The newspapers, all the articles, everywhere, the political, the, the national discourse is replete with instances of Fulani being supplied by the military, as I'm going to, as you're going to listen to later on. But nothing happens when you try to fight back, you become the victim. And we are saying we are fed up of being victims. We can no longer be victims anymore. If you kill us, we'll kill you. I'm saying it live on video, so you can share the video all over the world if you want. If you come to our land to kill us, we'll kill you. After listening to Mazin Nandekano all this while, I must tell you that Mazin Nandekano is still speaking to each and every one of us, those of us who are serious and following him. You can still hear his voice. You can still hear his voice wherever he is. You can hear his voice at all times. The message is so fresh and so new. So fresh and so new. The informations are very fresh and so new. And I thank God that the lawyer has brought a very wonderful message from Mazin Nandekano, the message of unity that we should all be united as Biafrans. You should all be united as the Southerners. We have to be all united as members of IPOB. Continue to pursue the righteous cause, which is freedom. Referendum is what we are asking for. We are not asking for war. We are asking for referendum, and referendum we will get. Referendum, something that will give us that power to decide our fate, where we belong, what we want to be, how we want to live our life. Nobody can deny us that. Nobody can deny us that. In a very short while, Mazen Nandekano is going to join us in a high spirit. He's coming out with the flag of Biafra, flying high. Ududua is going to be celebrating with their flag, flying high. And the national anthem of the two countries will be singing very, very high. And we'll be bold to say, this is a country that we will defend. Thank you so much for wherever you are watching from. If you have not subscribed, please kindly subscribe. Share the video to everybody. Tell them that Mazen Nandekano is alive and well. And he is praying for each and every one of us. And the strong message Mazen Nandekano gave us is unity. This is not the time to divide. It is the time to unite more. Unite more. Find a reason to be united with your brother. Everybody from the southern part of Nigeria, we are one. And we have to fight this battle to the last. Victory is ours. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra and Odudua will emerge. Thank you so much for watching wherever you are watching from. If you have not subscribed, subscribe and remain focused. We will be victorious. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. See you again on the next video.